Hello guys and welcome back to another vlog with the Time Zone Junkies. I'm Alex and this is my beautiful wife Marlene. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you don't say that very often. Anyways, uh, if you watched our live stream or our latest channel update, you know that we are planning on making midweek videos apart from our normal travel vlogs. And this is our first attempt. And what's it going to be about? Today we're going to talk about five things that we like about Thailand and by things that we're not so keen on, that we dislike. The reason we're starting with Thailand is because we're here at the moment and Thailand is also where we started our journey hitchhiking back to Europe. It's also a place that we visit a lot for various reasons. So we're gonna start talking about the five things that we really like about Thailand. So number one is the food. Yes, of course. Of course. Food. So what do you like about Thai food? And what is Thai food maybe first? Uh, well, you know, around the world Thai food is renowned for being an amazing cuisine and it really is but most people on, on the whole i would say only really know pad thai and thai green curry but obviously thai food is much more than that it's such a wide variety of food it's, it's really good thai food is a lot of things you know you have all the noodle dishes the fried noodle dishes you have the noodle salad you have the noodle soups you have the rice dishes on rice dishes all this massive amount and then the curry you know and you have green curry red curry yellow curry masaman curry all these nice amazing curries that have such really good flavors deep flavors yeah really good and what kind of flavors do you like about thai food i mean i like generally that the thai food is a mix of so many flavors um you got the savory flavors the salty from the fish sauce you've got uh, sour from lime and other sour ingredients you got sweet and yeah the spice mm. and the interesting thing about Thai food that it is actually a mix of many cuisines yeah mm. for example the Portuguese brought the chili to Thailand that's not native to Thailand but that's a side point and we're not going to talk about that now so what is your favorite Thai dish Alex? That is a difficult one. I think I think it's gonna have to be well, it can't be one. So if you have some tam, which is the unripe papaya salads, where you have fish sauce, lime, chili, onion, um, you have obviously the unripe papaya, sometimes sugar, some carrot, a little bit. sugar, sugar and chili and garlic I think as well. Yeah, sometimes garlic. Mm. Anyway, it's all mixed up and super nice. Long beans. And long beans, let's not forget the long beans. And then with that, we really enjoy ordering a uh, lab. You can have chicken, pork, beef, fish, whatever you want, or tofu if you're vegetarian as well. And they mix it with round toasted rice, and coriander, cilantro, mint, fish sauce, lime, chili. Ah, oh, it's just this, it's like a warm salad. Local Thai food, whether it be street food or little local restaurants, you know, the standard is always good. Pretty much whatever you order, whether it's noodle soup, curries, noodle dishes, fried rice, you're always gonna get a good level. Yeah, it's amazing. You have to come here. Mm. If not for the beaches, you have to come here for the food because it is amazing. I didn't mention my favorite Thai food. No, what is it? Uh, I think know. it might be the <laughs> papaya salad, but I really like a noodle dish called Pat Siu, which are like flat white noodles in soy sauce with, is it kale? Yeah, I think it's kale, yeah. With kale and chicken and garlic. It's very simple, but it's delicious. The second thing that we really like about Thailand is transport. Now we're hitchhikers and hitchhiking in Thailand is generally very easy. You generally don't have to wait for very long unless you're in very touristy places where the tourist police might even prevent you from uh, hitchhiking but if you're on the mainland if you're traveling in non-touristy places people will stop because they're very curious about you and it's also in the Thai nature to help people most of the time it's really good and people get what you're trying to do but occasionally people just don't understand even if you have a letter in Thai uh, they will try to take you to a bus station or a train station or even give you money so trying to get your point across is uh, quite important to just say I want to go with you as far as possible <laughs> and yeah that's about it really I guess. But generally super easy and what else kind of transport do we have experience in here well, in Thailand? Well we've done lots of 
buses or done. We've been on lots of buses in Thailand and overnight buses, day buses. Generally they're pretty good. You can, know, you can go to any big bus station and you'll be able to buy a ticket pretty easily in most places, even on the same day actually. And you can book online as well and it's uh, pretty straightforward. So when you take a bus, especially an overnight bus, they normally have a few different classes. So you have the 48 seaters, which are not very comfortable. You're a little bit squeezed, so I wouldn't recommend them for night journeys. And you have the 32 seaters, which normally are the first class buses and they have aircon. You can't recline the seat very much and the leg room is not amazing. But then you have the VIP buses. And we're not talking the tourist the VIP buses, we're talking the one that you will get at the bus stations. Mm. They've got normally 24 seats, the seats are bigger, you've got a lot of uh, leg room and you can recline your seat a lot so you can actually get quite a good night's sleep. Another good thing about the VIP buses is that they have stewardesses on there uh, or sometimes guys as well, stewardess, stewardesses? I'm not sure. Anyway, you sometimes have a guy or a lady on there and they will be serving you water and a few snacks at the beginning of the trip. So it almost feels like you're on a flight in some ways. There are also trains and we have been on quite a few night trains. They're basically all the same. We always go second class. They are quite comfortable. You're in a carriage yep. and there are lower bunks and upper bunks. And I prefer that to bus anytime yeah, anytime uh, now what about if you just want to travel short distance maybe within the city so transport that we like in the cities are the grab taxis they're basically the same as the uber taxi so if you know what uber is you will understand how grab works so you you need the app and you check if there are any cars available you will get the price which is different depending on demand and it's generally much better than taking a normal taxi when you are in a bigger city in Thailand because yeah. you you just don't need to hassle about the price you don't have to force the driver to turn on the taxi meter which is an issue very often in Thailand for example so these two first things brings us on to number three prices so food in Thailand is generally very cheap if you stay away from the touristy areas yeah, you can find in Chiang Mai, if you just go outside of a moat, sometimes inside of a moat as well, you can find food for 30 baht, 40 baht, and it's, you know, it's a And how much is 30, 40 baht? 30 or 40 baht is between one and one, uh, about 90 cents to one euro 10 or something like that. So it's pretty I think cheap. a dollar is about 32, 33 yeah. baht, so you get an idea. So it's... It's pretty cheap. I mean, the cheapest food we've ever found, I think, have been like a plate for 20 baht, which is ridiculously cheap, but that's rare. If you go south in Thailand, you might have to add on 10 baht. And how much is 10 baht? <laughs> 10 baht is what, like 30 cents? But even in touristy areas, there will always be a few cheaper options. There'll always be a local restaurant, like I mentioned earlier when we're talking about the food, which has good quality food and it's where all the local people eat. So if they eat there, you can eat there because of course it's going to be good. Prices and transport. Buses are super affordable, I have to say. Long yeah, distance uh, buses overnight for um, what you get. Yeah, I and mean, then even the day buses are quite a good price as well. And the trains are a little bit more expensive, but I mean, it's much more comfortable. So if you want more comfort, go with a train. It's time for the fourth thing that we like about Thailand, and that is the scenery. And most people, when they think of Thailand, they think of beaches, and most people think probably about Phuket or Koh Samui, which actually are not very nice places anymore. But that's also another topic for another vlog, yeah, some other sure. time. But Thailand has amazing scenery. Yeah, if you just go to the north of Thailand, or the northeast of Thailand, northwest, you have amazing mountain areas where you can go hiking, you can drive up to the highest points in Thailand, Doi Inan Ton in Chiang Mai area, and yeah, it's just a beautiful area. Lots to see. Yeah, it's amazing. And if you travel in Isan, it's a flatter Isan, it's a northeast, more untouched part of Thailand, I would say. And every part of Thailand has different scenery. You go down to the south and you will find really old rainforests among the oldest rainforests in the world. It's absolutely amazing. And also if you're in Isan, going back to that, you also have the Mekong River flowing mm. down and you can do a nice little road trip on your bike up there. Or another good place to do a road trip is obviously the Mehon Song Loop and 
Also, another place that people don't go to so much is a place called Loi and another place called We Lan. haven't been there yet. No, we'd like there to go. Actually, we have been in Thailand so many times, but there are still so many places that we haven't been to that are supposed to be absolutely amazing. So that's definitely something that we would like to do in the future. Here we have a video from Trat, which we will put up here, link above Marlin's head. Which is close to Cambodia. Yeah, and you have a nice coastline stretching down with the border of Cambodia, and it's actually really, really beautiful. And and there's nothing there no. it's amazing it was so beautiful so you check that video out because that will inspire you to come to thailand because it's, there are still places here even though you wouldn't think so but yeah there are the fifth and last positive thing that we're going to mention about thailand there are many more but we've chosen to do five things today is what people call thainess and it's quite a difficult concept to explain so for example in thailand when you greet someone you will do a why so in thailand you can why in different ways we really like i really enjoy the whying it's such a nice thing to do it's you know you do it for when you greet someone when you say hello when you say goodbye when you say thank you <laughs> you do it for everything basically it's a sign of respect so you can do it in different ways you can do it here higher up and higher up we don't know the rules for those things they've got with respect in thailand they respect the elderly people a lot so a younger person would always buy an elderly person first and i, I think if you have a lot of respect you, you're yeah, doing yeah. it higher up mm -hmm. and this is a very nice thing because they have a lot of respect for each other in that way which leads us on to the fact that thai people are scared of conflict which maybe sounds like something very negative but it really doesn't have to be because the thai community is very community based they all you know they want to make sure they have a good relationship with each other and if there is a conflict they try not to get angry with each other and they try not to lose face which is something uh, quite important here in thailand yeah so they um they have to practice being patient a lot and obviously that is rooted in in buddhism of course they get angry sometimes they're humans like just like yeah. we are but generally they try to compromise instead of fighting which i think is something something really positive they also smile a lot as a tourist coming to thailand and people are smiling at you it's really nice yeah. and if you're in non-touristy places you know that that smile most of the time is going to be very genuine so that is very positive positive. and it's probably very good for your heart to smile your way through life yeah. i think so that also brings us on to the five negative things that we want to talk about and actually Tynus being a positive one it for us has also been a few times a negative one as well yes which uh, has to do but what i said earlier that we might not understand Tynus. it's quite a different concept to us we are raised to be more in individual more independent to fight for our cause and all of these things so when a Thai person, I don't know, if you talk about the losing face, for example, for us, it's sometimes, I think in Europe and the Western world, a positive thing to be able to talk about your feelings, maybe not to lash out and scream and be angry. But for example, in Thailand, losing face can be, it's, it's a difficult concept to uh, explain. Mm. It's got a little bit to do with not uh, lashing out, not showing your negative feelings. I guess um, also another example is when we worked as English teachers in a mm -hmm. school. Uh, our boss was talking about one of their colleagues. She had a picture of him in, uh, in the classroom and she was talking about how he died. And it was a very tragic story about how he died. And the whole time she was talking about it, she had a big smile on her face. But is that really no, losing face? It's, That's just it's not losing face. kindness and smiling your way yeah. through life. It smiling if it's uncomfortable, very... smiling if it's funny, smiling in if there's like smiling through anything I think losing face is more to not show others that you have been offended or uh, affected by something negative I don't know it's a um, difficult concept I would like to add to that it's not always the case and you will know when someone's in a bad mood so it's I not always true I think we are having difficulties explaining yeah. what losing face is so if you are interested about finding out more about this we know what it is we just can't put it into <laughs> words so you can have a little google yeah, in google the search bar right uh, losing face Thailand and see what comes up man. and see what comes up 
So the thing that I probably dislike most with the tightness, and I think that's just because we are Westerners, we are fighting really, really hard in Europe to be equal, and not only like gender-wise, but with everyone, with elders and younger people and children have more rights now than they used to have in Thailand. We were talking about the why, for example. So the why also has to do with authority. The Thai king, for example, will only why monks, but no one else. Because the monk is considered the highest on the... Hierarchy, way. yeah. Up on the top of the hierarchy. Yeah, and then after that. We might just un not understand this because it works here, it's rooted in Buddhism, it's yeah. a sign of respect. I don't think it's a, a big negative. No, it's not no. a big negative, but... It's, just, I, it's something different. But I did say that I dislike it, and I really do. I dislike it because it's really difficult to know who you're gonna watch. It's easy, for example, if I'm a guest in a hotel, then they are gonna why me first. My advice is just to why everybody. <laughs> Except for children who might be under 12. I still do that as well. To, yeah, but you're not still supposed to, Alex. <laughs> Anyways, next negative thing is something that is related to food. Now we said that we really love the food. Takeaway food is a very popular thing here in Thailand and with takeaway food comes a lot of styrofoam and plastic yeah. and exaggerated amounts. It's, uh, it's really incredible how much plastic and styrofoam is used in this country and well, all over the world of course but here, okay just for example not only related to food but also drink, you can buy drinks, fizzy drinks from people in little uh, carts that go around on the streets and they will have a bottle, glass bottle of coca-cola, maybe even a can I'm not sure, but a glass bottle and they will take the coca-cola from a glass bottle and pour it into a plastic bag put a straw in it, put a rubber band around it, put it into another plastic bag and give it to you and then they keep the glass bottle. Now, so why do they keep the glass they bottle? They keep the glass bottle because they probably get a little bit of money back for it or something. But which is supposed to be for the customer <laughs> who buys the drink. So if you come to Thailand, which would be a, a really good thing to do, bring a Tupperware with you, uh, maybe a reusable plastic bottle or a metal aluminium flask or something. We have recently yeah. invested in bamboo straws. Now, we do forget them sometimes and have to use plastic mm -hmm. straws and we feel really bad about it, but at least we are trying and I think that's the most important thing you have to try because they use so many straws in these countries. And it's a global thing, it's not only Thailand. In Thailand, they have a lot of takeaway because it's nearly as cheap to eat, in the cities on the mainland, it's nearly as cheap to eat out or have a takeaway that it is to cook at home. So there's so much styrofoam and so much plastic. So that's enough for the theme of styrofoam and plastic. And we're gonna talk about transport again. We've already mentioned it as being something very positive, but there are a lot of scams in Thailand and they are mostly in transport. Yeah, and especially in the touristy areas, they will try to rip you off. <laughs> especially tuk-tuks, taxis, and Song Tao's, which, how would you explain what a Song Tao uh, is? Song Tao is a pickup truck that's had a roof put on top and they put a line of seats on either side in the back and you just jump in. And if you are in non touristy Thailand, it is the same price for you as for the local people. Taxis sometimes are a little bit tricky, especially if you're staying in a tourist area. They will refuse to put on the taximeter. We were talking about bus station buses earlier, that they're generally very good. I would say that you get more of your money if you uh, get a bus from a bus station. And if you book your bus, let's say on the most touristy street in Bangkok, Khao San Road, where all the backpackers are, you will probably be overpriced and the bus won't be so good. You won't get any snacks included. And the likelihood of you, when you book a VIP bus, the likelihood of getting getting a 24 seater is very low. We have kind of already touched this subject that we're going to talk about now which is price on things. So we have tourist prices and we have local prices but we already talked about that. We can uh, just point out some other examples. If you are Thai and you want to visit a national park for example, mm -hmm. you might pay 40 baht and a foreigner pays 200 baht, 300 baht, 400 baht. Yeah, it's which quite is a, big a lot higher. Thing. Uh, other things are food prices. We've actually been to restaurants where they have a Thai menu and a menu in English and you can see that all the prices on the Thai menu are a bit lower than the ones for foreigners that are in English. Or you go to, we were on Koh Chang, the big Koh Chang island and we were in a restaurant and we saw a Thai person pay 
40 baht for the yeah. same thing we were eating and when it came to us paying it was 50 baht each. So I think we can actually move on to our last negative thing about Thailand. I'm sure there are more but we're mentioning five today. The word parang. What does it mean actually? I think literally translated it means guava which is obviously a type of fruit um, but Everywhere you go in Thailand, people will say farang. If you uh, know where the word farang comes from, please comment below because I am not sure about it. But it's a word that is widely used about foreigners. And it's not the fact that they call us farang, it's how they use the word. Yeah, and it's used in many situations. So in, okay, so you work in a school, uh, everybody knows who you are, all right, I'm Alex. But they won't say teacher Alex, for they example. They will say it to you. Yeah, but, okay, to my face they would say teacher Alex, but to each other when they're talking about me, they would say Kru Farang, which means foreign teacher or Farang teacher. It's right? like as if you don't have an identity. It doesn't matter which country you're from. It's kind of difficult to explain, but it's just very different to how people talk about you in other countries when you come in there as a foreigner. They can point at you and say Farang, <laughs> they can sit next to you and talk about you and they say Farang, right next to you. I remember we were in a, a big Tesco's once, uh, it was quite late at night when we were shopping, uh, when we lived in Canterbury teaching there, and <laughs> this little kid just saw us, I don't know, it looked like we'd never seen a foreigner before, and he went, Farang, <laughs> right at us, I was like, oh. When we were teaching uh, voluntarily in the north of Thailand, mainly the students there were from ethnic groups in Myanmar, but we had some uh, Thai students as well, which have roots in Myanmar, but they, they, they are Thai. And, and they would also say Farang when they were talking about us, even though we were very close to them. And I tried to explain many times that foreigners do not appreciate being called Farang all the time or it's not the fact that they call us farang it's when and where they call us farang it's just i don't know i guess the average tourist coming to thailand probably wouldn't even pick up on this and it's not a big deal but when you have been here for a long time it can start to grate on you a little bit annoy you a little bit there are lots of other things that we really like and enjoy adore love about thailand and there are also other things that we don't like just like any other place in the world but for anyone who wonders, we do love Thailand more than we dislike Thailand because otherwise we wouldn't come yeah, back yeah, it's place year to after be. year after year. Yeah, that's such an amazing. easy place to be and people are so friendly all the time. Yeah, Most it's very laid back here. So we're gonna end <laughs> this vlog here. If you have made it all the way yeah, to the well end done, of this video, well done. Because I think we're, it's long. <laughs> yeah, we're very good at just rambling. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. Share the video with your friends if you liked it. If you think it was educational and someone might benefit from watching it. Yeah, if it's informative and yeah. you think someone, yeah, like mine and Seth will benefit from watching it. If there is it. something that you don't agree with, mm. then please comment below. If we have misinformed you in any way, Way, giving you some incorrect information please comment as well yeah. we are not experts in any and way and also give us any of your thoughts have you been to thailand what did you like what did you dislike uh, any extra information of course. or if you have any questions about thailand mm. ask us we've been here many times we're not experts but we know quite a bit yeah we know <laughs> quite a bit uh yeah so subscribe if you haven't already it's that little uh, red button over here it says subscribe and there's also a little uh, notification bell button in the exact same spot if you push that one you will get notified every time that we post a video which is good for you if you don't want to miss out and yeah that's about it i think yeah we will see you guys on sunday for our next myanmar video Ooh. let's do a little uh, thai thank you why kind of thing okay ready three okay. two one Kap -kap -kap. Kap -kap -kap. see you in the next one